finish up our draft um, review. We have one more meeting scheduled for Tuesday. As you can see, Mary is not going to be here tonight, thereby there are no copies. I did make copies of Todd's menu, which I have put out there for people. Um, Maddie, you have the Todd's. You have, okay, good. Right. That's an extra one then. Um, the full draft revisions were sent around earlier today. I don't know if people got them, but they do exist. If you'll see them in your email. Uh, on my piece of the agenda was that we have a public comment session. Mark wanted to share brief thoughts about uh, one issue in particular about that we already discussed, but he wanted to make sure they made public record. Uh, any loose ends that we have, but then we're going to talk about compensation. We're going to take a vote on the overall draft to move it forward, and then we're going to talk about the press release. Is there anything else that I've missed in my tally of things that we have to check off? Okay. Uh, Emily, I appreciate the North Street Association videotaping this for us. And this will be our only public document of this record. Um, and obviously, Mary will need to see that so she can transcribe for minutes. So thank you very much for uh, not only being here tonight, but all along. We appreciate your input. And since you're the only public person, do you have anything you'd like to say today? Um, yeah, just a few <laughs> quick things. Uh, please, come up and stand <laughs> and have us change your camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, first, I'd just like to say that um, I know that you expanded the mayor to a four-year. Um, and I'm not exactly passionate about that, so I'm not going to try and knock you on that decision. But I think that you should put in some safeguards then, not the recall, but something that would, in case something goes wrong, where the mayor is not incompa uh, unconscious in a coma, but is not able to perform their duties, that either the citizens or the city council can step in. So, Also, um, just a additional thought for initiative uh, petitions. I don't think that this was mentioned, but the change from the current charter to the new draft for it uh, was that you could, the city council, once the initiative petition came up, can now, or would now be able to uh, make changes to the initiative, like uh, go through if it's an ordinance and make like a few different, you know, tweak things. Um, that is actually, um, a lot of people do initiative petitions, so the city council cannot do that. Uh, I am working on an initiative petition right now, actually, and that was one of the reasons, because it has to do with racial profiling, and when you get uh, pol politicians doing things with racial profiling, usually ends up, you know, they tend to water it down, because they don't want it to be a sort of thing. Similar to when you were doing things with the city clerk, you don't want to send the wrong message of saying we don't have faith in the police, things like that. Um, so I don't... I'm not really passionate about it, but again, just to keep in mind if you want to consider that. Um, and I'd like to just further the conversation about free petitions, because that is something I'm passionate about. Um, I'm a bit bothered by the idea that, you know, if we create a direct route for to our government through this petition, that we will have all of a sudden like this landslide of people trying to do it, and that we'll, you know, have four resolutions every night saying, you know, we love libraries, or Buena Wisano is good. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that is a bit, um, you know, we already have the resolutions that people are bothered by. You know, I understand that, you know, you don't always want to hear about this whole, like, you know, bring the war dollars home, that it's a bit much sometimes, and you would like to just do business. But those happen anyway. There are six city councilors that you as citizens will not elect, and you have to leave up to the person of another ward to do. And sometimes, I'm sure, as I am, you would like to put a muzzle on those six city councillors because they don't bring up issues that you really care about because it's a different ward, or they do things that you really disagree with, and sometimes you wonder, how did this city have you know everybody in here really get along or something like that. Um, and also, for a threshold, if you were to raise it to 200 or 250, it would still be uh, easier to run for mayor than to do this. And if you're not a politician, it's actually really hard to collect that amount of signatures. It's not a super easy thing. And also, look, now looking into the future and how I see that this would help, is that it can really do a lot for minorities, uh, not just racial, but also religious and 
sexual minorities. Uh, politicians, as I said before, there are certain things they don't like to touch. Uh, one thing you can see recently was the transgender equal rights bill in the Massachusetts uh, State Senate, which was passed and signed by the governor. But it would not, nobody would make an action on it for a very long time because it was considered a bathroom bill, or it was called that, because basically if you were the senator that came out and supported that, you'd be the senator that would you know, cause people to lose their privacy in the bathroom, and you'd be slammed about it politically. And so for minorities that are oftentimes, or almost never, represented in, through elected officials, uh, whether that be city council, senator, or whatever, this could be a great route to open up. And in Northampton, we still have prejudice. These sort of prejudice still lives. Especially, I'd like to point out, uh, racial and religious. And I don't see those things as getting... I see them as getting better, but maybe not at the pace that we need them to be. Especially when it came to, comes to uh, anti-Muslim sentiment and middle anti-Middle Eastern people. Uh, the relig the generation that I belong to and that people in their 25, like they're around 25, that range, are very much used to this, uh, you know, image by the media that's been hammered into their mind that, you know, Muslim equals evil. And even if you can have a rational discussion about that, that says, oh, maybe, okay, maybe not. There's still a lot of those biases that are embedded into their minds. And, I th and I've had, you know, personal conversations with a lot of people that I know that it's, you can see that. So my worry, the thing that I think this petition could do is open that up for minorities and, you know, groups that will not be represented by the city council just because of their small numbers, and that this could create an extra push, an extra way to be heard. And I don't think that's something we should be afraid of or should shy away from. I think that's, you know, the future that we need and that we want. So, thank you very much. Thank you again for sharing. We appreciate you taking the time. Uh, again, this is the public comment section of the Northampton Charter Drafting Committee. I see one other person joined us. Are you interested in participating in saying anything in the public comment section? No. You have to come up to the funny line. I'm actually a reporter. I'm okay. here to observe, but thank you. Reporters have opinions here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Seeing no other hands raised, I will close the public comment section of this uh, drafting committee meeting. Uh, Mark and I had a conversation to make sure that he was up to understanding of the decisions and how we reached those decisions. And he first said he was fine with that, but I encouraged him if he had a strong opinion on any particular issue that he wanted to make sure was part of the public record, obviously Emily's documents here. <coughs> this would be the opportunity to take that, and he said he would be brief just to share his thoughts on the city clerk. Okay, thanks David, I will be brief and I appreciate the opportunity to get this on the record. I think most of you know that, uh, you know, let me just mention first too that I, of course, do defer to the decisions that the rest of the committee made, you know, when I wasn't able to be here last couple of nights. Um, and I appreciate that you were able to uh, consider the, the positions that I, I had noted in my memo to you. There is, um, uh, there is one issue though that I do feel strongly about and I want to go on the record uh, is, uh, as noting that I was in opposition to this. I'm not in opposition to the point where I, I'm on the you know, block veto end of this. But I did want to bring it up. Um, and that was the issue of, of the city clerk being still in an elected position rather than appointed. I understand that there was consideration beyond just the issue of, is this going to sink the charter? And I'm glad that that was the case, because I think those are the only viable ones, the only viable ones, the only legitimate ones, for not having this as an appointed. Uh, position. If you strongly believe that the position should be elected because of some intrinsic notion of the job itself. If there was a decision, if, if people deferred to that because of a sense of either intimidation by the city clerk saying that she would bring it to a referendum, or a concern that this would sink the charter, I think that our first purview should still be to our mission. That was recommend any changes to the city charter that, if it, deem that it deems necessary or desirable more desirable for the effective function of government in the city of Northampton. And I think when we look at, at what is the, the trend in Massachusetts and the strong uh, you know, research, the look, much of what we got from, from Stephen and the Collins Center, um, you know, about when should a 
a town officer be elected or appointed, there really is overwhelming issues to suggest that this should have been an appointed position rather than elected. Uh, the notion of electing should really be for the notion of, of judgment and leadership. And that's when you want to get individuals who have a role in the community and we're voting them because of their sense of the values that we have as a community. On the other hand, appointed positions are when there is some specific skills, experience, and knowledge. And all of the roles of the city clerk now are in that position. The McGoldrick or the Collins Center did list, uh, sent out, you know, this piece of the, uh, the eight criteria that you should use here. And this is one, the city clerk position is one that, that it falls in all of these appointed positions. This is no longer something where the values matter. This is something of just upholding the law. And the failure to uphold the law is met with censure by, uh, by <laughs> prosecution, theoretically, from the state. So you have enough assurances that you are going to get the honesty, the integrity in the process that some may have been concerned would be lost with an appointed clerk. I also want to point out, too, that the previous Charter Commission of Northampton, that one suggested, as did many other, I mean, if you look at the list of cities in Massachusetts that have an elected clerk, they're all the very small cities. The, small, the smaller towns, with a few exceptions. But by and large, the larger towns, and ours, and our city is in that larger group, have shifted over as they made modern charters to go towards the important position. Um, in the last charter, the one that was in 1995, this is the one where I spoke to Pat Goggins about that. What, what happened to that one? And it was the clerk's issue that was its downfall. But he said to me that this was a, um, that this was failed because of popularity and power of the then city clerk. The proposal, the proposal was to make this position appointed, and there was a large chunk of old ham who didn't, this is his quote, who didn't want to undermine this guy. He also controlled patronage. The new clerk position is more custodial and Northampton has changed, it would probably not be as big an issue. And frankly, I think that all the evidence to support an idea of an elected rather than, or an appointed rather than elected clerk, would be, is so strong that it would prevail. And that we needn't fear this issue of, of undermining the charter. It is consistent with our mission of recommending what we think is right for the city. And furthermore, there is still this circuit breaker of the city council. Our, our recommendations are going to go not straight to the voters, but to the city council. And if city council and their political decision, if their political choices want to say, no, nah, look, we're going to stand by this guy. And by the way, the city council standing by our clerk is the assurance that Wendy Moss will have this job for as long as she wants anyway. And she is competent. We have the right person for this job. She would continue in this position as long as she wants if she's appointed. The issue should not be about her. It should be looking towards the future. And the chance that you would get somebody who, because of, look, there's only one person who's ever on the ballot for this position. You get one person on the ballot who doesn't know what he or she is doing, and you're stuck with a city clerk who still has legitimate functions, and yet it's not being done correctly, and that is a concern for the city. Now, I said I'm not going to go and, and uh, resist the decision of the council, and I'm going to rest it there, but if anybody else wants to bring this, this forward uh, for any more consideration, uh, I, I would... I, you know, I'd be open to that. Again, Mark asked us to make sure that that was recorded on the uh, record because he's passionate, as you can see, about that particular issue. Um, my next topic, I believe, on the agenda is the compensation. Uh, we will then deal with loose ends, and then we'll take a look at the whole document, document as a whole. Uh, help Steve with any uh, drafting pieces we saw. Uh, start to take a look at the voting on that whole piece. But let's get to Todd in compensation and where have you moved the ball since last night at 8.15? Um, <clears throat> last night um, I took David's language um, home with me and um, started thinking about it and I'm, I, um, I, I think there's a lot of wisdom to a commission approach and uh, I, the concern that I had which I raised yesterday was about what the default would be. Um, so I think no matter how, what you do, this is going to be a politically fraught issue, given the inherent conflicts of interest. 
commission suggests changes does not mean the council will have the courage um, or the inclination to do those. So I was searching to try to find um, some sort of default uh, base that would resolve um, the confusion and lack of transparency about um, benefits, um, or non-salary compensation in the current charter. And um, I went back to look at the charter and was surprised actually to see um, that Section 2 um, expressly prohibits, or let me just read the phrase to you, a mayor, this is from uh, C2, Administration of the Government, the mayor and each member of the city council shall receive for his services such salaries as city council shall by ordinance determine and shall receive no other compensation from the city. And I asked Steve if there was some amendment, special act that would replace that, update it, or something that overrode this. He couldn't find any, I couldn't find any, doesn't mean that none exist, but that's the current language in the charter. Um, and now, uh, Steve raised the question that compensation may be up for interpretation, but in the charter itself, there are 10 instances where um, the word compensation, where, where is that? Um, there, are, there are 10 other instances where that you know, um, limits on compensation are listed for the um, various boards. Um, I don't have that page in front of me now. Um, but I, I, if it indeed is open for interpretation and it raises the question of why aren't these other volunteers and, and people appointed to different boards receiving um, benefits as well. So, this, again, I was trying to figure out, is there a way to put something in here to, you know, in the words of Louis Brandeis, to sort of bring sunshine to the charter, uh, to disinfect the, and bring more transparency. And so I, I wrote the email that I sent around, um, which was then followed by Steve's proposal, counter to, um, with new language, taking the ideas that David had about a commission. And it occurred to me, not being an attorney, that this is all done in ordinance, and having something as complicated and as prescriptive as I suggested would be cumbersome, problematic, it would require a vote every two years for anyone to get paid. Um, so I, I struggled with that, and then I, I settled upon, again, this is a, an issue that I feel strongly about, not, not restricting pay, but bringing some transparency and sh sunshine. Um, Steve had mentioned that a couple of the charters that he's worked on have prohibited benefits from being paid to council members and school committee members. And I thought, well, what about putting in, following the language of the current charter, which says no other compensation should be allowed, but then making an exception so that if, if the council at the beginning of the term wants to pay benefits, they can take a vote to override the charter. There'd be an exception there if they were to vote otherwise. Would that be a possibility to say that it should be prohibited um, except if the council vote otherwise at the beginning of their term? Um, let me just say one, one thing about benefits and how they're how they're uh, how legally they're given out the municipality. There's one there's one person in the city form of government who determines who's eligible for benefits, and that's the mayor. Um, the mayor can take benefits away from the city council tomorrow. Um, normally doesn't happen. He's, uh, it, 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 that, that's the last time, and I know that law has not changed. It's the appropriate um, um, body, whatever, whatever it is, but in the city, it's defined as the mayor. So the problem is they, they can't take benefits away from employees, employees because employees mostly are a bargain for them. Right. You can't take them away. But <clears throat> obviously, city council is not organized. So, I mean, that's, that's the situation you have now. So you can't have the council vote whether they should have benefits or not because they're not the appropriate body to commit that decision. It's the main. Can we put that as... Is the man a yeah. role to take the benefits away from council, <laughs> city councils. Um, but that's, that's... And that's why in the cities, the couple of cities that I did mention that, that, I, that, that I did work in, we put it in the charter so that the, that would override the, 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 uh, the general law. And it's a, City Council shall be prohibited from, from participating in, this, in the city's group health and life insurance programs. But period. No, not open for interpretation. It's pretty clear language. But I, 
don't know if, it's, you know, if that's what your intent is. No, I, I would I would like to find I would like to give full discretion to the council to do whatever they want. I mean, they could order two pays for themselves. I don't really care, but I want them to take a vote on it. I what what bothers me about the current system is an ordinance was passed 20 years ago that you can't even find on the website. Uh, it's not even available. There's even a note saying you've got to go to the office to, to get this information. No one seems to know what the ordinance is or where it is. And uh, it's not even clear that it's in compliance with the charter given the language in section two. And so I would just really like, again, science, shine some sunlight onto this because I think this is just messy and it's not good governance. And I'd like to find some workaround that didn't, that wasn't restrictive, but sort of you're saying there's an ordinance referred to that had to do with competition and benefits and no one could find it? Is that what you're saying? It's not on the website. It seems to be they didn't publish it. I, is a reporter getting this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, if you don't, I, I, have a, I have it here somewhere in my stack. Um, so let's just, just move into one area. Um, again, it's been 21 hours since we discussed this topic, and I just want to make sure we're all still on the same page. We feel that the compensation and salary needs to be addressed. We feel that um, at this point, the potential of recommending, as opposed to putting something direct in the charter with setting a specific number or figure, that we would recommend a commission, and that commission then would um, create a proposal, and that proposal would go to city council and be voted up or down. Are we all in that same place again, or are people moved since thinking about stuff overnight? Please. Is, uh, if we did that, are the only studies that we're asking for around elections and that? Yes. Because yes. I did think, like, are people going to be turned off if we dump, like, four big unfunded yeah. projects on the city? And that goes, I think, back to Charles' point of trying to tackle the top, the heavy topics here. But these are the only two that I believe we have currently on, on record. Okay. Gail? But I thought we also said that we were going to state some principles. Yes. And, I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. what I'm not certain of is, I mean, what we talked about with this independent commission was having a mix of citizens and some not people knowledgeable about issues like salaries and salary levels mm -hmm. um, to, to try to do this. And I'm concerned that Todd's issue is a crucial one because it goes to that exact reality that the city council does have the final say on setting salaries, even its own, which is an inherent conflict of interest just is. And we can't overcome it. He's looking for ways to hedge it about in a in a careful way, I think. Yeah. No, I understand no, that, that so that the citizens understand the conflict of interest is inherent. They're going to make the decision, but do it in the light of day. Right. So I don't know whether a simple statement of that principle to the commission is enough to ensure that the commission in its deliberations will get that and and have some way to you know enforce it. I, I don't know the answer. Yep. Other thoughts, Tom? Going back to Todd's concern and Steve's statement that uh, appropriations have to start with the mayor and taking the current language and saying that compensation shall be monetary compensation only unless otherwise appropriated or authorized by the mayor, which shall then be subject to approval by the city council. That would, I think, bring it out into the light. First you have X number of dollars that is there, and then if it's going to be over and above that, whether it be in form of benefits, pension, uh, health, whatever, daycare, it has to, the mayor has to author, uh, appropriate it or state it, and that then has to be approved by the city council. Does that get yeah. around Steve's limitation and Todd's concern that <coughs> it's on the table? 
That's, that sounds great to me. Again, it's, it's, it's the daylight thing. Um, if it's Make sure you're writing that down because we have no transcriber. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, Steve, do you want to reflect on that? Um, when, when the appropriation comes through for, for, for uh, group health benefits, it's a lump sum. So you really need somebody calculates how many employees there are at that time and, and they, you know, they figure out what the premiums are and they add it up and then lump sum it and that's, what, that's what's appropriate. You never find out exactly what's in that appropriation because it's just a lump sum number. Well, we were told by um, some of the personnel, we were given a dollar figure. We were given a dollar figure because, uh, to be blunt, uh, gay people, um, because it is now taxable if I were to get my health insurance from my husband, uh, the federal government is not recognizing that, so I need to have the dollar back, back and I have to I have to state that that is part of my income. Well, HR, they, the HR department does have it by, by person. But when it comes through to the, to, to, to the, to the council for, for an appropriation, it's just a lump sum. Would it be possible to make an additional, I mean, adding people, I mean, I know there are issues about um, enrollment periods and things like that, but it might be a little onerous, but it, would it be possible to? You could require the mayor to make a separate appropriation for council benefits. Other thoughts of what we've heard tonight? Meg? I like the idea of like what we're talking about right now. Tom's idea. We might need to talk it out a little bit more. But I, I could see the mayor's budget having a line item for compensation Specified. just for the city council. Um, now, are you talking just city council or are you talking all of the officials? Committee. School committee. Yeah. And the mayor himself, yeah. yeah. School committee. Elected officials. All elected officials. Right, right, yeah. School committee currently is eligible. They're eligible for benefits. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm, yeah, they're they're getting their they take benefits as does the they are eligible for benefits. Mark. Uh, the, yesterday, I believe we talked about the idea that so few of us even knew at the beginning of this process that the city council received benefits, which I'm sure is representative of the rest of the city too. It's one more suggestion, one more reason in support of the idea of yes, make this as open as possible. Let it be known that that's you know this isn't just an insider's uh, this is you know for those people know about it so they can go and run for it others you know should be eligible and aware of the same issues. Um, I, I'm still a little bit concerned, unclear about though where are the statement of principles and are they in the charter or are they just in the support of uh, material that we provide to the council? Yeah. Where are they? Yeah. Well, well, no, no, not where are they? Where are they? Talked about last night. Yeah. And and I. I thought they were going to. I don't know. I thought they were going to be in the. In the narrative. The, yeah, the narrative with regard to the compensation commission. Right. Yes. But that's not okay. that, that. That's. But I thought at, last night, if I recall, Gail, yeah. I thought you were on um, that there needed to be something in the charter, but a more delineated explanation of it would be in the narrative. If, if I. Got that correctly. I think that's right. I think so there's going to be a one-liner or a two-liner in the charter to make sure that um, people understood the seriousness or the ramifications of it, but the full delineation of uh, why we came to this conclusion would be in the narrative. Am I? I'm looking back my notes. That that's that's why I think tonight on reflection that it should be, and I, and, and it may be that that's what we meant last night. I'm not. Remembering. But our statements of principles are those uh, not just, I mean, if you're making it sound like it's just an explanation for why we're calling for the commission, but the statement of principles would, I, I imagine, be guidelines. You know, the commission should still recognize or not re or recognize this as essentially a volunteer position uh, with some compensation, or that it is meant to be a significant salary and benefit package in order to make the city council and other elected positions more accessible to people who otherwise couldn't do it. You know, and likewise, should benefits be part of it or, or not? It's not something which is now um, have the full weight of a restriction or in the charter, but that it would be something to to highlight that this is the general thinking that would have to be considered by those people who are on this commission and the city council. They can 
refer back to the founding fathers or the, you know, the, the principles <coughs> that are important, uh, at least of us. So. But I'm not sure there are any consensus about those principles. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm following you. Are you talking about what should go in the charter, or are you just talking about the principles? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that if you have something, the charter with the language that we've been talking about here, if there's something else that, that people who are on this commission and future city councils can refer back to, well, what is the intent? So it's not looking for any specific, uh, you know, specific guidelines, specific restrictions that it can't be more than this or it must include, or it, must, or it can't include benefits. You know, that's not in there. But just something that you would hope would have some lasting indication of, uh, of principles about you know, to what extent should this be compensated? Bill and then Gail. Um, at the risk of making a controversial point, because I think there's probably some disagreement uh, about it, I mean, in my mind, the value of having a commission is to further the principle that counselors and school committees should be well compensated and, and have it be a, a, an attractive reason for the position uh, and, not, and, and not narrow the potential candidates for the position. And you, Mark, stand the exact opposite <laughs> yesterday. That, that, that's that's absolutely the wrong reason why <laughs> that it would run for, for the council. Um, but in my mind, you want to have a, uh, I mean, if, if the issue is just transparency, if, if, if the, what we're going to be, let's take the transparency problem. Right. That is going to keep the conversation down <laughs> by itself. Because that's one of the reasons to do it. And I'm saying it's, it's a bad thing. But there's a tension between the transparency and the compensation part to reconcile that there's a tension. Uh, so, uh, I think you stated no principle and stated no um, uh, direction of what we want the commission to do, but the natural order of things is going to be like it is today. It's going to stay down. Uh, the only way you would, you would rectify that is say we really want a commission here so there's an independent group of people that can communicate to the public that there is a good reason why uh, council school, school committee people and mayor deserve higher pay so the public doesn't feel like they're being railroaded. That to me is the value of doing it. Um, yeah. So I think the only, uh, uh, um, there are disagreements, fundamental disagreements on this body as to what, as to the, as to the uses of compensation for public officials. And, and so I'm not sure that we'd ever get to a place in our discussions in time to state, um, to fix that. But, but I think what we could do is require it in the charter. Um, well, I, I, we're making a recommendation that there be this commission. We don't know that the city council will appoint this commission or go along with that. Well, my word would force them. They would force them to. Okay, so let, let's assume forcing for a minute. Then I think we can say in the charter, such a commission shall take into consideration the following and list the issues that we want them to think about. And it may be both of your issues. They may be inconsistent, but that that commission has to consider them. That's the only way I can think of to get the principles in as a requirement. Daddy, did you want to add anything? I was just going to say that I, I'm certainly in the camp of what Bill said, that I feel like the reason to call the commission is to give them an opportunity find some palatable way to increase the compensation to, to something that, like Megan said, would at least cover daycare, you know. So I agree that, um, yeah, you could, I mean, I guess you, you could have all of the, the competing uh, interests. I mean, I agree with the transparency, I agree with the transparency piece in principle, although I also agree that its natural effect will be, uh, you know, it seems like the only decent part of the package is the benefits, and that's because they aren't in sunlight, you know? <laughs> well, how about this? How about if, how about if, you, if we put in the compensation section of the city council article, and, and we say that, um, you know, annually or whatever, City clerk shall shall publish the compensation and benefits of the city council. Uh -huh. If I may speak to why language in the charter I feel is important, 
with all due respect to our position papers or our opinion papers, which we're going to be submitting to the council, I would assume that they'll probably, their shelf life will die right after the council enacts their version of it. Um, with all due respect, I, I, you know, I know that they're going to be emblazoned on some of our walls and don't play, but with all due respect, it's not going to happen. Um, so that's why I would be strongly in favor of putting something into the charter that basically kind of raises it up a notch. I agree with Gail. I think you can put in there that, that they should reflect um, and examine whether this is a, a you know a volunteer citizen job or a job that should she you know put out there as a question that they need to to kick around every ten years because the the point that I'm trying to make by proposing this commission is that every ten years they're going to have to look at it. Now they might put a committee together, look at it, and say nope salary compensation is fine, let it go, um, and have no recommendation. But there has to be a commission who goes through that process, and hopefully it, the public is aware of it, and it is covered by the press, and there is input, and it, the, the day is shining brightly. It's 10 years too long. <coughs> it's too long. Yeah. 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 I think the, what I inferred from the 10 years is that it would be on the... Uh, you had 10 years on the Charter Commission, and this would be <coughs> on the other 10 years in between it. Otherwise, you'd have a Charter Commission and a uh, Compensation Commission uh, possibly on, uh, at the same time. That's Why can't you have a Compensation Commission, whatever I call it, just be a standing committee? They can just examine any time it wants. Well, I think David addressed that last night. I, I think that... Again, the 10-year cycle, I think, is for the public's point of view. If you come back every two, three, four years and say, oh, yeah, we're going to throw another, we're going to increase, we're going to increase, we're going to increase, I think you hit a wall. I think that the public knows every 10 years that we get into a routine. Every 10 years, we're going to look at the package. Every 10 years, we're going to look at the package. The duties might change. The, the hour requirements might change. But technology might bring something that we're unaware of right now to make the job easy, easier or more difficult. So I just feel that if you put it on a regular cycle, every 10 years you deal with this issue, um, then people will be ready for it. I know that in FY15 budget, that whatever I propose, if I'm sitting on that committee, is going to have to cover it all the way to FY24, and that I have to plan accordingly. I have to set that policy there. I see a couple of hands, Megan and then Mark. Uh, what I'm worried about with that sort of committee is that everybody will be geared up, the press will say, oh, it's been 10 years, it's time for this to get together, and people will campaign on not taking the compensation, and, you know, it'll just be voted down as soon as it, as soon as they make the recommendation, and that will affect the next 10 years. Um, voted down just because there's always <coughs> an elected body that say, no more money, we don't need more money, we're doing this for the good of... <laughs> I understand, I understand. Um, So, that, that's my concern with, with the committee. That's why I just, I, I kind of like the idea of having some mechanism in place that it just sort of automatically happens and and then it has to be voted on one way or the other. And the, the question that we raised to you last night when you raised that was that how do we get it from 5 to 10? Or do we just start at 5? Well, right, you could start at 10 though. I mean, we can put that in. Right. And the, the concern, the, again, the concern would be as people would go to the ballot in November saying, oh yeah, this is the measure. If you vote yes, you've doubled your city council. Just, yeah, just, just, maybe they would think, oh, the 10 grand. Right. It, it was at five. So I, I just try, I'm just trying to kind yeah, of no. take, again, the what, reason I wanted to go to commission as opposed to putting specifics in the charter was to address the issue that this is a hot issue and the economy still is, is depressed and, you know, we have to think of what's going to happen between now and November. So. I think I saw Mark and then over to Meg. Just I mean, to uh, Meg. Just a, a very quick one, but I, I, I am a little bit, uh, I think that Stephen might have a point, though. What if you're in a period of hyperinflation and your mayor is now, you know, can't make it on $80,000? It's, it's not realistic anymore. Is, does he need some escape hatch, you know, so that 
the special act of the charter. No, but there, there is an escape hatch, which the council can, they can increase their salaries any day. This is just an out for them if they don't have the political courage. They, okay. This this is just an out for them to sort of right. say, here's the body that recommended it. But they any day they could stand up and double okay. their salaries. So you're not prohibiting the salary. No. no. You're, you're just saying they have to be studied every 10 years. Correct. And, and this is how they double them in the sum of all these, which is interesting. Each even number year by the third week in November. So it doesn't, it's not going to be an election. That's how it's Progresses in some of them. What about the idea, I mean, in terms, but I'm not saying that we have consensus on this, but just going back to the point that a few people made, um, you know, what, where, you know, this, this, we're just proposing something to city council. If they find it, you know, unpalatable, they can change it. But if we said city council salaries go up to $10,000 now, that's in our charter, and we recommend this commission, then when we hand it to them, they're going to say, you know, we can't pop, they'll go back down to five. If that's, you know, where they're at, then, you know, the forward. Yeah. Like, there is no way, no how, city council is going to keep that in. Right, so, but in that way it's safe. Yeah, yeah. For, I'm agreeing with Maybe you. our position is yeah. saying, you know, if, if in a perfect world this is what we would be doing. So, yeah. Um, I, I was just trying to think about whether any use of a cost of living um, clause anywhere would help us get past this worry about the 10 years so that at least something would be happening to. Um, help the salaries stay in touch with the budget. You know, I know Megan had talked about it. I think the problem with the, the COLA is it wouldn't make the necessary adjustment that a lot of us feel should be made by the jump to 10. It would take, you know, at 3%, it's going to take 20 years for that to double. Um, so it says that, and if you have inflation, um, it'll, it'll just keep pace, but it's really. Not, you're not increasing it, although the voters will think it's increasing, but it's, it's just that it's, uh, it's basically tre treading water. So you're not getting that. And mayoral compensation comes into the city court. It's still that's their occupation. That's what they live for. And you're, you're saying to the city, my proposed owner is the city clerk, if you've seen it, he was for the mayor. You're saying he shall devote full time to the office of mayor. So it's not the same thing for the city council. They're not, you know, the city council, this is not their living. <coughs> Let's take a regroup as to where we are because, again, we've been on this issue now a good hour and 15 minutes between the two nights. I need a consensus on whether we want to put a dollar figure in the chart. I think that that gives us a base ground to start with. Let's start there. Should there be a dollar figure in the chart? Just get a sense of where people are in the room. Mark, let me start with you. Um, I, I, I think the position that you've gotten that Tom has worked on is, is a good one. I have to just defer it. Uh, it's sensible. There is, you know, I, I think this concern about a, a cost of living adjustment is, is taken into account. I, you know, there is this opportunity for council to weigh in at any time. Maybe. So if it really became okay. critical, they could do that. I'd still lean against putting in a dollar amount, although I think Maddie makes uh, a strong argument. And if it was in, I wouldn't make a big deal about it because I just think the council would strike it. Um, my only concern would be uh, in the interim period between our releasing of it <laughs> and the council deliberations, that would, might become a very hot topic and make the process rockier. Now it might make people feel good that they got it struck out. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't well, necessarily think it's a deal. It's going to be a red herring and everything yeah. else will pop. <laughs> right, you know, there's it's, it's it's, it's all ways you can game it out because I don't want it to be a, 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 a clairvoyant. Um, but uh, I guess I, I, my ideal world is that the whole process is very smooth. There's no bumps in the road. Um, and that would potentially be a flashpoint. Uh, um, I'm torn either way. I support um, Maddie's approach, um, but I think it, it would need to be struck out because I think it would kill the charter if it was in there. Any, you want to resell your position? Uh, I mean, I think that I, I like that idea. I mean, it, I'm not going to hold anyone up pushing it forward more. But right. I think that's good. I would um, not put a dollar amount, but I would I, I th thoroughly believe in that commission idea. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm just as torn. 
long as everyone else is about this. I, I, I don't think in the end we should put the dollar amount in because I think our job is to get this charter passed. And, and, and I would worry, I don't think you can predict what the presence of the dollar amount will do to the whole um, enterprise here. Tough. I don't think a dollar amount is appropriate in a document of this nature. I mean, for the reasons that have been stated, and I also agree with the, with the commission. And the commission could, the compensation package could certainly include a cost of living increase. I don't think cost of living uh, language should be put in the charter also either, because uh, that would have to be uh, an appropriate standard in the future. The Um, there were at least two voices that spoke to putting a dollar amount in. How passionate are those voices? Thereby, there is no dollar amount at this point being recommended. We are moving forward then to the concept of a commission. The wording of that concept, did you have rewrite of the rewrite of the rewrite? I have the last right. Okay, then why don't you do the for us? We can we can we can pull out the name. I just kind of some of the witnesses. It says that within 120 days after the passage of this act, the city council shall enact an ordinance establishing an elected official compensation advisory board. Said ordinance shall contain provisions that the board shall periodically, but no less frequently than five years, <coughs> study the adequacy and equity of the compensation benefits and expense allowances of municipal elected officials report its findings and recommendations to the mayor and city council, and said report shall be filed with the city clerk. Said ordinance shall further specify the composition, term of office, and method of appointment of the members of said board and any other provisions deemed appropriate by the city council. Okay. The nuances between that version and the original version was five years versus ten years. And um, who's one of that? Removing the elected officials from the board? Last sentence was struck, provided, however, that no member of said board would be For some reason, it's not on my cut. Maybe I didn't save it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Provided, however, that no member of said board may be a current or former elected or appointed official of the city. Current or former? Or former elected or appointed official of the city. What's an official? I mean, I don't, what, would be the, what would be deemed an official? Official, uh, official is someone like uh, an assessor or um, a city clerk. Anybody that has statutory authority. Statutory. Uh, we could say employee, and it might, might sound, it might be better. Let's just say. Well, I think it's too broad. I think it's yeah. broad. Uh, what do you mean? Too many. I think too many people fall in that category. You don't think that they would have expertise? Or? I think that they would. I would. I could go along with current. And I, I don't know if I like warm. I just throw that out. I was just thinking about a, kind of a, a conflict that you know they, they're all they're a part of the inside, the part of the fabric of the of the political establishment. Yeah, I think the, the optics on that would be some back scratching of former colleagues, and it wouldn't look good. Okay. Or what about but what about the time limit? The term, uh, in other words, who's been a Official elected or whatever terminology within the last, within the previous 10 years or something like that. I don't know, it just seems okay. to me it. I'm not strong on I mean, it, it just struck me. That's a good <laughs> is, is there, given that the charter has to pass muster with the Attorney General, is there anything in this language that would potentially be a problem? Actually, Excuse this charter does not have to go to the Attorney General, it's a special act charter. Oh, really? It's just a, it's just a charter commission charter. But it has to pass. But this has to pass House and Senate. Even if there's, <laughs> which I don't know which is worse. But if, but there's, if there's a conflict with state law, then that would override the local charter. Yes. Is this possibly in conflict with state law? No. Okay. Um, so we have to deal with several little the nuances that are different here. Um, the I put in the original thing uh, ten years. I had put, and you said five. I had said that they had to vote on it, and I was, I was 
not wedded to a two-thirds majority, but it had to come out of the committee. Uh, and then I also talked about that it could go to the city council for a vote with a simple up or down vote. Your mechanisms are a little different, but we need to figure out where our final language will be. People feel this should be on a five-year cycle or a ten-year cycle. Have we decided that we want to put this language in the charter first? Before Good we point. Do you, want to, do you want to speak to that? I'm in favor of this type of a body, but I need to know that we reach consensus. Okay. Are, are we in consensus on that piece? Let me just make sure that I thank you for that check. That we want to put the con compensation of elected officials into a commission that would be X number of times. Okay, yes. we're there. So thank you for that check on that. Um, let's move then to is should the cycle be five or ten years? Wait, can, can you, is that does the language you just read us appear in part of what you emailed us yes. today? Where is it? I have the David's oh. language and the summable ordinance and then my language. It was an yeah. attachment. So it's attachment. a separate attachment from the draft that brings yes. us up to date. Yes. yes. Oh. It was the email um, it was a reply to Todd's email subject that proposed compensation language. So for those of you on your iPhones, if you pull up. And this language says no less frequently than yes, five. That's not five right. minutes. So they could do it if and they, there is inflation. Right. And they could just be dormant for five years, but they can't be dormant for more than five years. Yes. Could you say no less frequently than 10 years? And they would still, if they needed to get together after three years, they could. Is there a minor risk? As you said, there's stuff that any tragedy will just forget about. Is it possible when you have language that, that's not firm, that they just forget to do it, no one notices? Give it 10 or 7 yes. if you're looking for it. The council uses this as a way. They want a reminder. Fair enough. And the first appointee will always keep reminding them that we're, we're, we're on a board. No, that's the full that's number. That's, that's not the right one. Yeah. I didn't get your that language. That's not the problem. OK. Uh, five or 10 years. I just have another question. Please. Please. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, you were going to, um, is this very similar to Somerville? Is it different from Somerville? Uh, it's um, a hybrid. It's a hybrid. Um, Somerville was a lot more expansive. In, and I, I'll throw another thing out here because it came out today here in this building. Um, the Somerville ordinance not only examines elected official compensation, but compensation of those employees of the city that aren't represented by a union. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. Oh, yeah. Not going there. Okay. Um, okay. And are we to believe, as we're discussing this proposal, that the required considerations that we had listed as principles would be added? Is that, are people, or is that a question you need to ask us? Confused. The, guiding the guiding principles, the things we're at, that we want the commission to be required to review. That would be added to the commission language. I assume when we're putting we're the commission in there. Okay. But <coughs> let's ask that question to make sure. Do people feel there should be a short but pithy statement on the uh, guided principles that would be part of the charter process? Tom? Well, just to clarify, there is a sentence that sort of specifies. Um, that they will um, study the adequacy and equity of compensation, benefits, expense allowances. We could sort of add, make a, a list within that sentence, and then add a short principle or a clause that includes the principle if we can narrow it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think it would be hard to narrow the principle down. I mean, I'm comfortable with that language almost enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, adequacy, I would think, is a safe word. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Let's just put Gail. It's not. We don't have it. Again, since there is, as Todd has pointed out, the opening in the language for strengthening or accepting a principal statement, because it's already there that Steve has added, let's just put that on hold and move forward. Okay? I want to look at the five or ten year issue. Todd? I think, I think the language that not. Uh, not greater than five years, adequately addresses the concern that some, that some of us have raised about well, what happens if, why do we have to wait 10 years? What if there's a type of a situation that uh, 
warrants uh, this body to convene sooner than 10 years. So I, I think that not more than language, whether it be five or 10, is appropriate. And, and I don't care if it's which. Okay, Gail, do you have a? But the worry is a conflict with the charter committee when, uh, at the 10 years when the charter committee meets. But that's I, don't get, I, don't get, I don't get the. That's only, if it's on, that's only if it's on the, uh, it depends what, what year it's on. It doesn't have to be on the 10th or 11th year. It could be on the 16th or the 18th and, year. Well, what does one have to do with the other? It's only if the charter committee names numbers, right? I mean, which we're not doing. Isn't this up for the council to manage? They, they could sort of time manage you know, the charter versus this. Right. The current language is but no less frequently than five years. Are you saying no less frequently than 10 years would mean at least once every 10 years, exactly. but you could do more if you like. So would that satisfy you, or do you want more rigid language? I can live with that. I can, no, I can live with that. That's, I just sort of thought that 10 years was, was a night. This almost goes back to Mark's point. Um, again, if we are managing full-time employees, you want your salary to be looked at every year, every couple of years, as part of your union negotiations. Um, I wasn't envisioning it the same way. I was sort of seeing it where Mark was, that if you had to do it at least 10 years. But if, if people feel that is the clause they're comfortable with, I can live it up. And again, this is just a sort of a crutch for council that doesn't have the courage to raise their own salary. Right. I mean, they, they could, as you've pointed out, raise it at any time. This is just saying, if you don't do it by this, you've got a charter clause saying you have to have done it by this period of time. Or somebody has to review it. Correct. And again, they don't have to approve an exchange, they just have to review it. So, not more, than, not at least every 10 years is the language. Is, are we there? Okay. So, can you change your, at least if we got you up to date? Okay, as opposed to Somerville, which is doing it every two years. Each even numbered year. Yeah, every two years. But the effect of this is the council, even if they wanted to appoint this, they could do it every two okay. years. Every two years. Now, the appointing authority, mine I spoke about having representation from all the wards and two at large. Yours just talks about appointing a committee. Mine just says that the ordinance, that they have a prerogative to put the composition in the ordinance. I'll leave it up to them. I'm comfortable with that, but I just want to make sure that. Um, Stephen, I mentioned that issue about Somerville and their language saying it has to be done by the third week in November, which also goes to the 10 year or five years. It's five years. You might have it in a year when you're not having an election. But it, would it be appropriate in the charter to ask like the board will submit its report to the council by, by September 1st and the council will vote on the recommendations prior to the third week in November? Hold that thought. I just want to get focused on composition. I don't want to bounce around between all the different thoughts. So don't lose that thought. Let's just talk about composition of the council. He has that the city council will, will set that. I like the idea of rep from each board. I, I think it, it, it implies that each councilor is going to choose someone. Other thoughts? So you have a choice, at, a recommendation. If you want to put a third one on the table, that's fine. But currently the choice is, do you want to have the city council um, create the composition, or do we want it to delineate, delineate it as one from each ward and, and two at large? I mean, I would think the commission should have some professional expertise yes. as a guiding principle. And I don't know you're going to get that on a word-by-word -word basis. That was the, the part that, that changed my mind yesterday, when I, because I originally came up with the ward piece of it. But then when you talked about how do you bring in folks. Go ahead, others? Mark? David, given that there is such the issue here is the direct interest of the of the councillors, same thing can be said for the redistricting commission. You were on that. What was the process there for establishing its independence? How did they choose the people who were on that? Um, Gene, you're in the room. How did we do that? I didn't really catch all the questions. Uh, did the, the people were, I submitted my name to Claire, Claire nominated me to run the re-precincting, and each of you ward councillors proposed a name, is that how Red got on? Yeah. 
mayor, the mayor called me and asked me if I could. Okay. Be yeah. Okay. We gave we gave the names for the mayor's office. Gotcha. And then the mayor. Called. What was the total number of people on that? Uh, no, two plus seven. Nine. Plus seven were individuals from each ward. Yes. Was there any concern that that was lacking in independence? Not that I'm aware of. Well, Persons from the ward had to knows has better knowledge of you know the surroundings. So when changes were made, they can right. recommend that. That is relevant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we didn't need to know if we lose Spring Street, where does it go? How problematic is that? Is that the same neighborhood, the same contiguous boundaries, all sorts of stuff we had to play with on that. Okay. So, Gail? Yeah. We had said we wanted a mix of citizen participation and expertise. What if the two, what if one for each ward plus the two at large people who would be required to have the expertise? Would that help us? They're not independent. You just grew. I think, I think I think if you get too prescriptive in this thing, they're going to strike you. So, I mean, I don't know why we keep, we keep on trying to work with this. I think it's <coughs> let, let, let them make the decisions on their own. I mean, if we're going to put stuff in, they're going to say, well, no, we're not going to take charge. You're dealing with people that are sophisticated when, they, when they're choosing individuals for this type of a body. I think that they're going to choose appropriate. They're not going to stack all downtown people to go over the salary recommendation or all leads people to go with the salary recommendation. They're going to want a diverse body. So I've actually gravitated that I'm more comfortable with his language than my language to be. Uh, uh, if, if we can move to that quickly in the, in the conversation. Is that OK? I have no objection. So the language would be stay the same that Steve has proposed, which is that the city council would create the composition. Composition, chairman, law, and method. Gotcha. And then take us to the next group, uh, which was um, uh, do they have to make a recommendation? Does that recommendation need to have any supermajority, or can they have five opinions going forward from that group of people? Is that is that relevant? Is it a charter issue? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. And the compensation, in order for them to raise a compensation by by statute, it has to be two thirds. So any, the, the committee doesn't need to have any prescriptive language that talks about the numbers needed to pass a recommendation, and the city council doesn't need to have any recommendation to that effect. The city council, in order for the city council to raise the compensation if, from this recommendation, is they still have to, it still has to be two thirds long. Gotcha. So there's no need for the, those two clauses that I had in my old one. So that gets us to... I think all of my issues are up there. Keith, would you read this one more time? And then we had your issue and the language about strengthening or not strengthening the the uh, reason. So take yours through it one more time for us. Well, I forget the last sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Within 120 days after the passage of this act, the city council shall enact an ordinance establishing an elected official compensation advisory. Said ordinance shall contain provisions that the board shall periodically, but no less frequently than 10 years, study the adequacy and equity of the compensation, benefits, and expense allowances of municipal elected officials, and report its findings and recommendations to the mayor and city council, and said report shall be filed with the city clerk. Said ordinance shall further specify the composition, term of office, and method of appointment of the members of said board, and any other provisions deemed appropriate by the city council. Provided, however, that no member of said board may be a current or former elected or appointed official of the city. Okay. So this is an independent board. Are people comfortable with that last phrase, just to make sure? You're not. I'm not. Okay. Okay. The reasons I stated, I don't need to state them. Okay. Who? I, I'm with Tom. I think if, if you had a, within the last 10 years, so you're not preventing somebody, you're like, yeah, I, I, was, I was an employee of the city in 1964. I think it's self-correcting if the council is dumb enough to appoint city officials to be yeah. our you know, recent city officials. The optics are going to be horrible. And they'll sabotage it. Yeah, they'll sabotage it. Absolutely. So, you know, I, unless that's their intent, but I think you've got to leave that discretion to them. So, so you you don't think the phrase is needed necessary? Uh, well, I'm with. I guess I'm with Tom, but I don't know. What what are you so are you suggesting mixing the whole phrase or just changing the? Um, I don't like the concept and. If, if it's important to be in there, I think that there should be a time limit. I mean, there could have been somebody who worked in the recreation department when they were in high school. Why should they be prevented from 
How about the same current and not form? Yeah. Current. That doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, why should you? We should be able to benefit from people's experience. The wisdom of the knowledge yeah. of the people. Right. Yeah. But I, I think you should have some lag there. I mean, this is a revolving door issue. You know, that, that you could still have, you know, somebody who just, okay, I, I, I left the office, but I, I'm still somewhat beholden, or there may be, you know, some, some deal or something with the current members of the council. Well, we're talking nine members on this bond. It's only going to be every 10 years. I mean, to, Tom, to, to Todd's point, I mean, it only, you're only going to successfully convince the public to accept the salary increase if there is some stamp of approval from a respected body. And the council is too stupid to make the body respect it and make it transparently full of cronies. That's not going to work. It's going to blow up in the face. But that's just getting rid of the cause of time. Yes. Is anyone else other than Mark speaking to keeping the clause? No, I have another issue. How are, Mark, how, uh, how, on your little spectrum there, how important is this to keep that clause? Oh, well, first of all, mine wasn't keeping the clause as it is. Mine was keeping the clause with the correction of or elected or appointed official who has served in the city, you know, within the last right. two years. Right. Um, but um, how strong is it? I'll, I'll stand aside. So that clause will be struck. Are we there? Everybody's in the. Yeah. Um, other issues. Mark, you're all set? I just want to all of it from provided, however, all that goes. Read the clause one more time just to make sure people understand what you just struck. Read the sentence. Said, said ordinance shall further specify the composition, term of office, and method of appointment of the numbers of said board and any other provisions deemed appropriate by the city council. That exists. Provided, however, that no member of said board may be a current or former elected or appointed official of the city. So we're talking about getting rid of provided, however. Current or former. Are we a consensus on that? Have we moved the ball forward? It just seems so extreme that they would put current members on the body. I mean, that undercuts the entire purpose just of doing it. Suicide of the thing. I mean, it's not that I'm in favor of current members being on it. I just can't. Current kind of former city officials they could put the agenda. They could put some uh -huh. cards on it. Right. But the mayor would have to approve these people, so there would be some the mayor, council have to approve it. The so the mayor, it, so the, the council would just propose <coughs> and approve. I'm, I'm wondering if there's someone on the council who wants to sabotage this. That would be a great way to do it. This is part of the city council's job would be to, to, to also um, figure out the method of appointment. They want to, if they want to have the mayor appoint and then approve. Okay, it's so up to them. Okay. So the city council can sabotage their voting vote. Okay. Yeah, they, this they is have a great kind of understanding about it. All right, so can we read it? I believe you have the correct language. If you could read it one more time to see if we've come to uh, an understanding of what we're recommending. Within 120 days after the passage of this act, the city council shall enact an ordinance establishing an elected official composition advisory board. That ordinance shall contain provisions that the board shall periodically, but no less frequently than 10 years, study the adequacy and equity of the compensation, benefits, and expense allowances municipal elected officials and report its findings and recommendations to the city council, the mayor and city council, and said report shall be filed with the city clerk. Said ordinance shall further specify the composition, term of office, and method of appointment of the members of said board and any other provision deemed appropriate by the city council. Are people comfortable with that language in its current format? I have one issue. Please. I think the 120 days we should consider the passage of the act occurs in November. I we also have councilor elections in November. If you have a change in the council, you're going to have... There won't be change in this year because if, if we pass this November... It's on the state ballot. It's on the state ballot. There will not be a change. We'll have the existing council running into the next term. Okay, that was my concern. Is There's there only one odd caveat. If the Secretary of State doesn't allow it on this ballot, it kicks it to the next one. So there is a remote possibility to which you speak. I guess my, I would lengthen the time. Um, okay. 
that would be the only that would be my only caveat. I don't think it, I don't think it hurts by the opinion of the time. I mean, this is a new concept that something's going to happen, and I I still think 120 days is a relatively short period of time. 180. I feel more comfortable with that. 180. 180. Comfortable. Sure. Go with 180. Done. Okay. They have a half a year after it passes to create a commission, which will look at salary compensation, etc and make recommendations that will go to the city council, mayor, and the clerk's office. Create a commission or pass an ordinance? Or pass an ordinance, excuse me, okay. pass, it, pass, sorry. pass an ordinance to create the commission. Are we comfortable? Mm -hmm. I see all nodding heads believe that we're in full consensus on this issue. We are finished with the decision topics. Uh, we didn't deal with the um, sunshine Transparency. I was so happy that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for checking my balance here. Um, do you want to take us off of that topic, Todd? We have we have we have to get into loose well, ends, um, and this was one of our loose ends. Steve mentioned um, an option. I've been following from Tom's suggestion about uh, putting in a prohibition on benefits um, for council members, school committee, unless the mayor. <coughs> Instructs otherwise, whatever that um, was that Steve used. Yes, and I, I would be in favor of that. Your suggestion to, for the clerk to publish it, I and mean, technically that information is published now, but it's not on the website. You have to go there. I found it's um, it's section 82-8. It says salary schedule, which immediately followed this section, was removed at the time of adoption of the code. Current salaries are on file at the city offices. So uh, it, technically that would be published as well, but it's not available. It's it's not enough sunshine for me. You have to come to the building. You have to come to the building. And I understand why they don't want to you know, slap this stuff up on a, on a website. But well, they if do. you look at the Herald, that's true. I mean, you, know, you just have to go to the Herald and get anybody's salaries, you know, every retiree and the state is on there. It's everybody who works for the MBT is on there. We work for the city of Boston, city of Springfield. It's all on the Herald. It's all there. Well, I would, I would um, put forward um, language that Tom suggested. Just throw that out there and see if there's... Tom, do you want to put that language back on the floor and then I'll write that Maddie? Or, Gail, you wrote it down, I think. Well, I think that basically the, that the current language, the, the language in the current charter that that we would use and specify that compensate, the compensation refers solely to dollar compensation dollar amounts, and if there are to be any benefits other than dollar amount, it has to be emanate from the mayor's office as an appropriation or as, as a benefit to be approved by the council. That's the general concept. Okay, and we're putting this in the charter where? So the, the existing charter again says the mayor and each member of the city council shall receive for his services such salary as the city council shall by ordinance determine and shall receive no other compensation from the city. So all we can do is add the clause unless... But you're, you're putting it into a document which no longer will exist. Okay, but it, it, we have to take that okay. and stick it into one of these sections that of the rewrite that was circulated this afternoon. Well, Where is the commission clause going to go? I would put that in the transition provisions. There's a bunch of things that the city council will have to do once this is adopted, and that would be one of them. So there's no compensation article? Correct. Well, there's it's within an article. So is it, it will be within Article 11. It will be a section of Article 11. Is there any conflict <laughs> with 2-4? Do you think the compensation articles in both school committee and uh, the legislative section of the document that we're working on and would be appropriate for the next up for that. And we have compensation here. Members of, the <coughs> members of the city council shall receive such salary for their services as made from time to time and set by ordinance. No ordinance increasing or reducing the salary of members, blah 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 blah. So it does have it does have a compensation um, section. So, so that's the school committee. So that's where you put the language that salary uh, shall yes. relate only to dollar. Yes. And separately appropriate or something like that. I can I can wordsmith something that it catches the concept. 
Are we all comfortable with that recommendation and feel that that's something that should be put into this charter? Is there anyone in it? No, Betty, I'm just a little concerned. I don't want it to be a situation where people are getting outed for taking health insurance. I don't think it's a, pr I mean, I think that for the city, for, for taxpayers to know how much health insurance costs and how much, I don't, I, I don't quite understand the effect, and I'm not saying it would, but I, I don't want to go anywhere where it's like, oh, wait, she has a family plan? I thought she was divorced. You know, I don't, that I do not think is appropriate. It's private information. Would an appropriation necessarily go into that amount of detail? Or no, it's just a number. It's a number. Yeah. yeah, it's a number. It's a number that says, it's a number that says, I mean, I'm not challenging you, I'm just truly different. It's a number that says if everybody on the council took a family plan, this is what the appropriation would be, or it's the total number of the cost of that year's who signed up for what? I, I don't it would be It would be something like in the, in the budget, it would say, in the city council's budget, it would say um, uh, salaries, $100,000, benefits, you know, $120,000. Now, since the situation now is some people will take health insurance, some don't, how would, the, how would that affect the appropriations process? Would they, the mayor's office have to check in with the counselors, hey, you get the health insurance or not? We're already doing it. We're already doing it. Yeah. 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 They had to get the number for the lump sum. Okay. The, number, the number already existed, but it's a subset of the overall city's <laughs> compensation package. And all we're saying is to break it out, to have it as a separate line item so the public is aware of this process. Are you comfortable with that, then? Yeah, I think that I can imagine just the way that, like, you know, we said Mitt Romney said he took a dollar for a salary. I can imagine that can become an issue where people then say, well, I don't take the health insurance, you know, and then the poor person that has to take the health insurance, whatever, <coughs> you know. I think someone had made a comment in one of the earlier meetings about wouldn't it be nice if, you know, if, if people who needed the health insurance could get that special appropriation, I could see the council agreeing to, to offer that to people of need. I mean, if they want to go down that route and evaluate, you know, what constitutes need and what doesn't, but we're not limiting their ability to to, um, to structure this any way they want. Right? Are we? Well, and, I, and, I, go ahead. and I don't think that anybody's going to make a big deal about it, saying, oh, she or he's taking the health insurance. I mean, I think that there's an obvious need, that's why they're taking it. That would be really low to, to be exploiting something like that. They could do that now. Yeah, but sure they, they could do, do, that do it now. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, and it's not. It's just that it's not. Uh, uh, it might have right. 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 So. I guess I just am saying, you know, I'm I'm okay with it. I'm just I'm saying a little bit what Megan said. You know that personally, you know I don't I don't as a value statement I don't begrudge people getting health insurance and I feel proud that we can provide health insurance to our city councilors. So I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't think that, I'm for transparency, but I don't think like, you know, woo, wait till people find out about this. You know, I think that's a bummer. Very useful to this yesterday, actually, you know, the concerns. Sure. Um, you know, I think this is fine and we're not taking away a benefit, we're leaving it up to them to decide. It's just going to have a dollar amount. It's not going to be next to anyone's name. Um, it, it would only be embarrassing if somebody decided to act kind of Which they could do at this point in time. Right. 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 It's only embarrassing if they're abusing the system, too. I, as you say, people who need health insurance, if this is... Well, hopefully they won't get into who needs it. You know, yeah. Except that somebody's yeah. taking it. And somebody's yeah. it. All right. Other loose ends. The people who are... Uh, just, I had one more item about this one, though, too. In this 2-4, and I'm not, I don't know how Stephen's going to uh, words with this, but all the references are to the salary increases or decreases, but shouldn't it also say, or expanded benefits? Salary and compensation. The problem is not up to them. Well, the cost of the health insurance is not uh, expanding the benefits to include health insurance or not, or to adopt a new benefit. It's not up to them. It'll be up to them. Whatever it is for the city. Yeah. 
Is that well, no, because necessary? the councils don't get you know, vacation time and all that, you know, all that That's stuff. Right. All they get is access to the. I, I, all they get is access to the group health and life, and that's not their decision to, to negotiate those policies or to. Their only, their only, their only um, authority is to approve the appropriation once it's in the budget. Right, but they're not negotiating the, you know, what is the, the what is the composition of the package <coughs> in terms of what, well, which health care program do we have? Here. Oh, what the, the but the rather just the whether they would get. It's not the, the value of the benefit, but the expansion of the benefit to include some new program. Maybe it's irrelevant. I don't. Okay. Okay, we're talking about other loose ends. You were sent the document this afternoon. We know that many of you might not have had time to review it all, but. Where where are we with loose ends? Does anything else pop up in people's minds, There's Mark? The Owen Freeman Daniels, he brought up that issue of the city council having the final say on increases in fees for uh, for on the sewer and some of the other uh, enterprise funds. Yeah, well, we talked about that. We did? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wondered what was it? We what said was um, was it? that we would take away the restriction in the current charter. So the council wanted mm -hmm. to take over the fees, they could. Um, but we're not saying the Board of Public Works can't. And we're not saying the Board of Public Works has to. It's up to the council. We're it was after passionate statements by Gene Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Did we finish everything with the city clerk? I know we all, it was a consensus, but wasn't there some I wrote the city clerk article. Um, <laughs> it might not make a lot of sense, but uh, it's in the new draft. Uh, but basically, let me, let me uh, put it in, um, let me just try to explain as much as I can. Uh, the city clerk remains elected. The term is two years. Um, then I had to kind of look at you know, what we do for mayor because, because of the vacancy thing. Um, and I made the vacancy, um, um, the council appoints to the unexpired term. And the prohibition, I mean, what, I, what I did was in the documents on the felony conviction thing, instead of repeating it after every, I put it in the back and said, this applies to all elected officials, so I don't keep on repeating it. Um, <coughs> the other thing I said about the city clerk is, um, the city clerk shall be both full time and not the city clerk. Because we did that for the If I try to mirror the mayor's language as much as I could, you'll also find the city clerk. Then I put all, <clears throat> all the other boards, the elected boards, I threw them in there uh, just as kind of placeholders until I could talk to, to Wendy about you know, what these are and what their terms are. And, and, I, would, and, I, and I found out one that I had bad, bad information on was the, Ford, the Forbes Library. Those trustees have four-year terms that are staggered, and you know if we're gonna if we're gonna take the staggering away from from the, from the school committee, maybe we should take the staggering away from the Forbes Library. I mean, it's not a big deal, and it certainly would make the city clerk happy. Um, and you know if you want to leave it a four-year term, fine. But, you know everybody else is a two-year. Okay, I think that's a legitimate point to bring up. Let's take a look at uh, the trustees of Forbes Library. What are their responsibilities? Does anybody know? I have to disclose my mom is a friend of Forbes Library. We are borrowers from Forbes Library. Yes, once. So they provide probably broad or policy oversight to them, to the, to the library director. Um, they hire and fire the library director, but then mayor has an input on that as well. I believe the mayor serves on the chain. Am I right on that? Yes. So I think we staggering. The, the question was to staggering in four years. Uh, I have no opinion. I, I, I leave it at four because we've never has given us any reason to warrant a change from them. But I think staggering in general is confusing to people uh, and serves an obvious purpose. A 
Okay, let's take the four, two or four year terms, spin around the block. Mark, why don't you start us off? Abstain. <laughs> I don't really care. I mean, the staggering, um, they're the not serving Two or four, four, that's all you get to play with now. We'll come back to staggering. Two oh, or four. Oh, four. I'm sorry, what was it? Two or four. Four. Consistency, I'd rather it were two, but I don't think we should take it away. So I think that would be What's your current charter? Four. 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 Okay, let's get into the staggering issue. We were getting rid of staggering on school committee uh, because we reduced it from four to two. Uh, that's how we handled that. So, Mark, take a position, go with it. Uh, look, I, I'm hearing that there are some benefits to the clerk and for consistency with other offices, but I guess I, you know, why? Go and find out from some of the library board. What is this important for any particular reason? Maybe it is. I think for the school committee, we took out staggering a little bit because it was confusing. You're in a ward. You're like, am I voting this year? Am I not? I don't know. I think for four, since it's not ward specific, I don't think it matters as much as far as the confusion. But again, I mean. I haven't looked at this. Uh, I agree with Vegas, probably not absolutely. <coughs> I try to extend her use to this. Todd? Um, I my concern would be that if, if there is a board and there's complete turnover after four years, I don't know how long people serve on this board. But if you're up forever, forever, okay. okay. <laughs> Russ has been on 32 years. <laughs> Okay, so there's not a there's not a risk of a complete turnover at the board. Um, then um, get rid of the staggering. So when you said when we doesn't like the staggering, is that because it costs extra money or it shouldn't cost any extra money? No, it's just it's just confusing it's to have to confusing. keep track of, of you know who goes on what year. It just that doesn't matter. It it's seems like antiquated library. to me the staggering. I'd say no staggering. No staggering. I'm always contrary. <laughs> <laughs> to me, the staggering, it puts the position before the, the public every two years and reminds people that there is this position out there in the event that someone's interested. I, I sort of like the idea that it's there. And I don't, but I don't care. I really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody come up with where the public well, consensus it, on this yeah, one? I mean, I think Tom's got a good point also. If there's no... I'm confident throughout this whole process if we're making changes where there's not a problem, it might get up people's noses. So, um, and since no one's saying there's a problem here, it doesn't sound like it is a little bit confusing, but it shouldn't cost one be more money. Um, I would say the default, unless there's a compelling reason, keep it the way it is. That's a good point. I agree. I agree. I, I'm at the, it's not broke. Why are we going there? We heard no testimony on right. it. Why, why go there? I think that they've got a, a system. They've got good trustees. Yes, I don't like staggering. Yes, it's potentially confusing to the voter. <coughs> so, do we have a consensus? Gail? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. okay we're, yeah. we've moved to that. No stag or, there is staggering for your terms. To keep it the way it is, you'll take care of the correct language. Okay. Uh, community Act Committee, Preservation Committee, that was just put in the charter, so I'd assume... I'm sorry, I forgot that. No, you haven't ended yet. Uh, I would assume that will be taking the language we have the city adopted and putting it in there. And there has been no call by any group to change the language, so I think you're comfortable with the current. Could you change that language? Yeah. Yes, that's voter approved. So I'm just saying it's on the table, and I'm trying to take it off the table. So it's not highlighted. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's coming at the end of the month. Then the two year terms, two people, two year terms. You'll have to check with Wendy. I don't yeah, want to be on record saying it. Okay. Uh, one of the loose ends. Oh, Another loose end, yeah. Betty. Betty? I think that 
that's fair. She had to leave to go to another meeting and miss that component of the uh, agenda. This is the ward that she is representing. So to be respectful, let's go down that path. Um, my argument was that it would, it would, it would go up the works. Uh, it would uh, make the uh, nomination process much more efficient, drag it out, um, potentially be embarrassing to <coughs> be put through a public ringer that have a competing nomination in a, in, a, in, a, in a public setting in a full city council meeting. Uh, and that would be a disincentive for people to want to volunteer for those jobs. The council still has the ability to vote down what the mayor proposes regardless. Todd? And it was also going to undermine the powers of the mayor um, to, to make these appointments to a broad committee. And that was right after we stripped the mayor of uh, presiding over city council. Yeah, correct. The other part that I had was that I heard, Maddie, on that particular topic was that it didn't, the city council or city councilors at right now can nominate somebody. So if you're applying for the planning board, that can come through with a letter of reference or a nomination to the le by the city councilor. So they have the right to enter the process from the beginning. But to Mark's point that he raised, that um, by setting up this is the mayor's candidate and this is the city council's candidate coming before the city council for a vote could be problematic. And it was to get the names to one central body from the beginning, is what I think I heard that night. Now, I'll stand corrected by anybody, but that was my recollection of what was there. To that end, Mary made copies of all the work that Emily's been doing. Oh, cool. Oh, wonderful. So you have these to take back for your historical records, read them and review them for all the gifts. Your, your things, make you know your Christmas cards out of them. <laughs> uh, she will also, obviously, if you go to North Street Association, if you just Google North Street Association, they have everything up there now, including the summary, uh, a brief summary. But um, uh, they have the films up there that you can download, but she downloaded them for you here as you go to write your narratives. Please. Uh, oh, oh, loose end. Um, yes. Uh, Barry Ross been dutifully coming to all of our meetings. Um, he has this proposal that we formalize a, a, a pro-con procedure uh, for all uh, proposals that go to the city council. Uh, in the spirit of the proposal, I don't agree with it. Um, but uh, since he has been coming and has put it in front of us, I thought we should at least discuss it. And we had a conversation after the meeting last night where he uh, offer a compromise proposal. If, if taking my argument that it would be overly rigid to put in a charter, you have to do this specific procedure forevermore. Um, uh, he still wants you to make it a, 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 a side argument, like that they run, it's a runoff voting election procedure. It's a recommendation you consider uh, trying that sort of thing out. So I put that before the body. I'd like to take a motion to recognize Barry, just if he has any comment on that. Can I take a motion to that effect? So second. Okay. second. Barry, do you want to address this issue? Because I know it's important to you. Yeah. Um, Please stand and come to the podium. Uh, the, the, what I've come to understand from my dealing with the city councilor and the mayor and trying to get legislation passed and, <coughs> is that in reality, the reality is everything is done that is legislated is done in committee. That's where it happens. It happens on a personal basis over a cup of coffee. It happens in small groups. The way the city operates right now is that information comes to the city council, but it's already been decided. And the city council, more or less, as uh, Bill Dwight would say, uh, kind of bobbling heads, agreeing with everything that comes before them. That's the reality of the situation. They will argue that other views are considered, but in, in point of fact, what, what comes out of committee becomes law. People, you've heard it from the mayor, you heard it from Jim Dostal, the people on the city council do not have the time to look into all the issues. 
Therefore, the people with a vested interest get involved in the committees and generate what effectively becomes law. Very often, the other point is that unpopular issues, I was threatened because someone thought I was going to come out here and speak against an issue that was important to them and controversial. The reality is you can, it, it's very difficult to come before the, ci the city council and speak on divisive issues. Therefore, there needs to be a way to calm it down, to get all views presented. Gene Tacey spoke about how he was uh, received flack for simply wanting to discuss the CPA. So everything that's been discu discussed here is about city council. But that's not where the laws are being generated. You, it is imperative. I just spoke to someone who moved from the city and was dismissed by a city councilor as being uh, not knowing what he's talking about. The guy had to leave the city because of an action for which his views were not heard. I live in, in Florence. In my community, we have $3 million worth of sewage work that needs to be done, and yet they change the environmental laws without giving it any consideration, impact on the stress on the sewer system. Whether I'm right, whether the man who had to, and his family who had to leave Florence, whether they're right, they weren't heard. Yes, we came before the city council and spoke, but it was dismissed. If we have, right now, you have essentially a pro, when it comes before the city council, you have a pro position. However, the pro position is generated, there should be an alternative contra position. I want to speak to the um, compromise that you suggested with uh, Bill, that you felt that it should yeah. be a... If, 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 if you don't want to make it part of the charter, I would suggest that you simply put in there that we, we recognize <coughs> that people felt they are not being heard in city government. And a way to do that is to, when you have pro, when you have, uh, they always read off the pro position before they take a vote. It's always done. However that is generated, it's always done. So let there be a means created so that there is a con, uh, a con position, or perhaps even a neutral view. And there's many ways to do that. Um, I spoke to Bill Dwight. Thanks to Bill's suggestion, I, I brought it up with Bill Dwight about setting up a website uh, where could, people could, could post their views. So the idea is simply, there is a record of it. The gentleman who, and his family that had to leave Florence, it's no joke, I just spoke to him this afternoon. Um, he, he wasn't heard, and there is no follow-up. There is no follow-up to the reason he had to leave. But if the legislation was approved by the city council, had the cons, now we should be looking, he, he, he had to leave, and okay, this is what he said would happen, did it happen? And there's a record of it that's a... Did you bring this up with the Committee of Best Practices? I've brought it up to everyone. No, I just wondered if that, specifically to that group, because to me this is where this would flow, would be the oh, Committee of Best Practices. I, I can tell you, Best Practices approve many things, but they get blown right through. Uh, best Practices mean nothing when it comes to when somebody wants something. Um, well, we, we're following the Committee of Best Practices recommendations as we speak, and they're putting moving forward to the new council. So I'm just saying that I, I believe that this, that is the right vehicle that you'd want to attach your recommendation to. I have no problems with this body taking a vote or taking a consensus of the consensus about um, whether that should be something we would, we would suggest that they take a look at. But I'm just wondering if, personally, you've talked to the, the work that was done by the, the Committee of Best Practices. And I can tell you who was on that. If you give me a second. Sure. Can I just while things are looking, Steve, where, where do these issues reside in terms of charter ordinances, best practices? Is there a place to address this type of practice? I would say the best place to address this is the council rules. I, 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 I hear you. I, and I also know uh, from speaking with the people, uh, the reality is I was told by David Narkowitz to come here. This would be a place to, 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 to discuss it. I was told by my city councilor this would be a place to discuss it. Lisa. Gene, Gene Casey's here. I think uh, I got support from him that uh, this would be, and he in, in fact offered uh, support on, on the position. 
and he's, he's giving his agreement to it right now. He, because, uh, yeah, I will take some members. May I ask Please. Barry, are, are you asking that there be some type of a, for a better term, minority report that uh, emanates from various bodies? That, is that what you're asking for? That's essentially what it is. Okay, so essential. what type of uh, body would you envision having these quote-unquote minority reports? Would it be just uh, city council? Would it be the various boards and commissions? Or would it, where, who would you see as uh, being required <coughs> in your ideal world being required to provide a minority report? I think that at every step uh, of the process where there is a meeting, uh, where, they, if, where they take minutes of that meeting, there should be the pros and the cons, as was done here, to good effect. And it should bubble its way up. So it's, whether it be the, uh, the Board of Health, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, License Commission, are you saying each of those bodies? I, I'm not speaking to each of the bodies because I'm not that familiar with okay. each, each of the bodies. But I'm saying that if someone has the time to write up a positive, it's not, you know, it's not unreasonable to think that somebody raised an alternative uh, viewpoint and therefore that it should be doable. But it shouldn't be necessary. There are certain, you know, I, you might want to put in a threshold, and I'm all for that, where a certain amount of money, a certain number of, of signatures or whatever, a threshold, uh, how, how it would be, would be done. But I would leave that to the city council to work out the details, as you're saying. Simply that I, I would leave it as broad as possible. The people I, I, who I are on that committee, um, Lisa DiPiano, James Palermo, uh, Michael Bardsley, Wendy Foxman, Alex Kiesel, David Darkowitz, and Bob Rockman. Yeah, I spoke to several of them. I spoke with uh, Michael Bardsley extensively. Michael Bardsley uh, oh, certainly w was... Okay. I think the, the concern that, that was raised, and I just want to share with you, is that you would need to delineate specifically what are we talking about. Um, uh, there are a lot of motions to take in any given meeting. And if you're saying that the cons have to be, you have to delineate as to what you think those opposing opinions. I don't like pros and cons is uncomfortable to me the alternate positions or something, a different terminology there. But you have to delineate as to what those were. And again, you started to go there when you talked about dollar value or, mm -hmm. or whatever. But even if it's an 8-1 vote, that one vote, I think, has the potential being recorded if it's on an issue that's of some significance. Now, defining some significance is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Again, this is why in a charter, I don't think it belongs because it gets to the point of having what ifs and two, it, gets, it would be longer than the charter itself. But I do think you have a position with the Committee of Best Practices. And I think that the City Council is the people that you raise this with. I'm sorry that Dave sent you here, because I, I, you know, I disagree with him. I do not think this is a charter issue. But it's up to you to take it to the next step. Your opportunity will be, when we present this to our draft, to the City Council, you can speak to it at the next public hearing after that, not this coming Thursday, but the Thursday afterwards, and say, look, here's what happened. We had a, I had a conversation, went to several of the, the drafting committee meetings. They recommended that it become, that it, it wasn't appropriate for the charter, but it needs to go somewhere, and ask them as to where it should go, and see where Bill Dwight and Dave take it at that point in time. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine, thanks. I'll certainly take it up. Bill, Bill made some suggestions uh, also. But, you know, just from your perspective, if you don't see it happening in this local government, not to draw an analogy per se, but just imagine what if in Iran or some of these dictatorial countries, citizens had a right to post anonymously, so long as it was, you know, their views and have it come up for a vote. Oh, and, and again, this is where we have articulated for a strong fourth, fourth estate, because we want the press, but we certainly can't realize the press is going to cover every decision everywhere. That's why we're thankful to places like North Street Association that uh, film all this stuff, so there is a video capture of it. Uh, but it's unrealistic, I, to, it's unrealistic for, for the average citizen to, to go and view all the films, but it would be nice. I, I understand. Yeah. And the, the other step would be for the people who are um, in the uh, uh, minority position to also submit an ad when it comes up to uh, difficult decisions 
that they should submit and add their minority reports and uh, put that into the record to make sure it's part of the record. We had that with their charter review committee that predated us. We had people who didn't agree with everything that was on there. They said, submitted a minority report. And that's the best practice that I think people should establish because I agree with you. I think that there needs to be a vehicle to capture that there is, just wasn't just one viewpoint on any issue. Phil? Maddie? I, I just want to add to that because I, I think that David is right and I, I, I don't see how it can go into the charter, but I do want to encourage you to continue the issue because it just reminds me of the law, like when you have a dissenting opinion. <coughs> when, you know, a panel court comes out with a decision that, that what they decide is going to be the law, that is the precedent that has to be followed. But if there was a strong dissent by one judge at the end, they literally write a dissent. I'm aware and of that. And then if, if the next time you are trying to, uh, you don't agree with that decision, you can quote the dissent. And then over time, do you know what I mean? That dissent can gather momentum. I'm aware of it, and that's exactly what I'm calling for. can flip it, you know, down. so I'm just saying. And, and, and I see it as being a relatively simple thing. And You've I got want, a pro? I want to do move the question forward. Thank you okay. very much okay. for showing, but I'll Thank take you. a couple more comments. Megan, did I understand that you worked in the legislature? Yeah, Congress. And uh, situations where there are minority reports on bills or things of that nature? Yeah, well, how, what I was thinking... How does it work? Well, what I was thinking during this was there's always time given during debate to the minority opinion, and there isn't always a minority opinion, because I was just trying to think logistically how would this work, because I'm sure there are a lot of issues that just need to get passed, and you know, th there are no cons, maybe, um, but... Uh, but there's nobody to advocate for the cons. No. Right, right. Um, uh, so I, I think it's something that belongs in the rules of the city council, yeah. um, just how they conduct debate. That's what but, I right, there are always minority reports as well. That's what I was thinking also, is that it should be in the rules of the city council, but is that something appropriate to state that the rules of the city council shall provide for the ability to give a minority report and do it that way gives uh, credence to what, what Barry is saying in terms of uh, that there should be some recognition that there are alternate views. I throw it out for discussion because... Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, in here where we discuss the purpose of the city council and the business, I mean, I don't think that it really has a place in here, but I, I, could, I could see... Does anyone want to speak to having it here as opposed to the question that was raised? They want to speak specifically that, oh, to open this conversation up again. We had this conversation once. I just want to see if we want to open it up again. We've talked about putting principles and compensation clauses and other places. Um, what would be the problem of inserting a principle like that um, in, in the charter? Say, question. We'll just, oh, sorry. That's the same question he had. So I, 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 I'm looking for new okay. information here. Gail? Okay. I, I want to reframe this just a little bit. Because what I'm hearing Mr. Ross say is two separate things. One, that sometimes on difficult issues, it's very hard for people who might not be holding a popular point of view to speak up in the atmosphere that is um, created by our city council. And, and I see that as one issue, and that doesn't have anything to do with pros and cons, it just has to do with an atmosphere that I hope our new city council <coughs> will take into consideration. It's not a charter issue, but here's somebody from the citizenry who's come here multiple times now and said this again and again. It's very important to him, and I'm hoping the city council will listen to that. That's the first piece that I hear. The second piece that I hear is when the city council makes a decision, it would be really useful to the citizens to understand the reasoning for their decision. That's what I think he means by pros and cons. I don't think he necessarily means a minority report because, as Megan says, there may not be a minority speaking up on something. But if a committee is working on an issue, to me, the committee has the obligation to seek out pros and cons on whatever issue they're dealing with. That's part of their job, just as we're trying to do that on our issues here. I don't think it's a charter issue. I think it's a rules issue for the for the 
um, council, I think the council could create a rule of their own that says every one of our committees has to report out um, their recommendation to the council with an analysis of what they thought about. Just as, a, just as a, you know, as a judge has to do that when the judge or the panel of judges makes a decision to get something the citizens deserve. But I don't think it's a charter issue. And the only thing I can think of to do is to, to include a paragraph about this in our narrative, letting the council know that we see it not as a charter issue, but as an important issue. I'm threatening them with free petition. <laughs> alternatives issue because it's a charter issue, but we can't make sense on it. Um, if the agreement here that this is not a charter issue, why would the charter committee make a recommendation about it? I agree. It's, 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 an, it's an oddity, but we just have somebody who's quite passionate about it, our, and I would respond. Our elected officials seem to think it is a charter issue. Very we're saying they're wrong. Uh, <laughs> but again, we, 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 we decided, again, it's part of our proceedings, we decided there wasn't a charter issue, so it is part of our report, it is part of our narrative, that this came before us, and we chose, we said, thank you very much, and I wrote down actually already that, that you know, uh, that would be part of the narrative that I would draw up, so, you know, unless people have objections to that, very to begin, it's like we more than a one-liner. Um, but it is the kind of thing where I'm going to kick it back and, and dump it in Gene and his colleagues' laps and say, you know, this is where we think it should be. Now, if they disagree with us, they can put it in the charter at their stage of the review. Okay? Right. But we, are, we, we vetted it. We decided it wasn't a charter issue. And we, we are acknowledging a no vote, if you will, on this. Is that That's valuable? Nice. That's where I was had gravitated to, but I just you know, I don't want to not discuss the things we didn't discuss. I'm gonna to try to paint a bigger picture. All right. Thank thank, uh, thank you all. For Any other loose ends <coughs> that we want to bring up tonight before we move to a general acceptance of this document. I, and, and then we'll take another vote on Tuesday. Where, when he has the final, all the wordage and verbiage cleaned up, he's going to send it to us over the weekend. You're going to have homework, and on Tuesday we're going to take an official. This is it. When you send it, will it be in a word processing form so that if we feel that there are grammatical corrections or language that should be changed, that we we'll have the ability to do that? I would not change a form and send it back to him. I would, to be candid, just having managed nine people with a 40-page document, I would print your document out and red ink any or print out the page that you feel there's a red ink on, and submit that to him in hand on that day if it's a grammatical thing. But I would suggest that you print these out and red ink, red ink them up so we can walk through this on Tuesday because we have to get a vote on this. And it can't be a vote without all these little I mean, amendments. I, I, I would rather not spend a lot of time on, you know, if, if, I, if I put a comma someplace, and those commas are important and everything. You know, I, I, I've been told I should go to a comma or or something because <laughs> <laughs> um, must have missed that in, in grade school. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not adverse to someone picking up the phone and saying, you know, Steve, right. page 12. Right. Just, yeah. you know, don't, don't hesitate to do that. Okay. I'd, rather, I'd rather not spend the time here to do Okay, so having said that, having said that, having said that, we have bits of homework that we have to do. All right. Now, Bill, you're writing up the city council section. Maddie, you're writing up the mayor section. Tom and Gail are going to write up the election commission section. Um, Tom is going to write up the city clerk position. Gail is going to write up the um, three or two initiative, whatever it is. Thank, thank you. This is an position. Mark is going to write up signatures. Uh, Todd is going to write up compensation. And Megan, you were writing up 
for or to your term, and I have term limits, but um, one of you that feels very passionately about it. Because it's all yours. So there will be narratives in those areas. Are there other narratives that we felt need to be written? Red's escaping here. He's holding his breath. Uh, <laughs> I had to get pneumonia for it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point, where he did have his breath. Uh, Bill and I will be writing up the intro over the weekend and the, the tie together of the whole piece. We will come in here on Tuesday. We're going to ask you to have those narratives. Um, to us by Sunday, 5 p.m. <coughs> Is that doable? Us meaning who? Each other? Each other. Again, you're not sending out comments in these. You're sending out this as a piece of information. Okay, you're also making sure that Mary Madura is CC'd with this so they can be adequately publicized. Go ahead. Are we allowed to comment on that? No, not until you get back here. Okay. Not until okay. you get back here. You can send it out as a point of information that this will be discussed on Tuesday. We will come in on Tuesday and we will um, have two main objectives. One is to approve the revised draft, which he will have to us by, wait a minute, let me put it on, 5 p.m. Finish one thought, Dave. Okay. I'd rather be in Bermuda. <laughs> okay. So we will go through the uh, position papers that people will be putting forward, including uh, uh, the, work, the work that we'll be working on uh, as one of our main agenda items. The second main agenda item will be to uh, not wordsmith this document, but approve its content so we can move it forward to the City Council. Now, what I would ask everyone to do is when you go home tonight and you're wound and buzzed and you actually have an extra hour because it is only 7 o'clock and we're moving towards adjournment, to take one more look at this. It's on your computer. Go through it. If you see anything missing from where X is or something or a problem, get it to him. Get it to him by uh, sometime on Saturday so he can turn around on Sunday and get us a copy, the final draft draft. Does that work for you? I've already found things on my own. Okay. <laughs> we have to write email. Right. I'll, but I'll just say, if you <laughs> find things, if there are, there are phrases, it's like, wait a minute, it was supposed to be two years from there, not four, whatever. Put it in, get it to him, and we can do that, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get it. Yeah. Because you want to give it to me. Right. You're not debating it. You're and getting I'm not it part of this, I'm not part of the body. You're sending it to him so he can make the changes in the document. When will we get a draft language for the compensation? That will be part of the Sunday that will. 5 p.m. But if you need it ahead of time, you negotiate with him about that language earlier. Okay. Okay. If, in fact, that's something that you could do before you leave. If you go, you go back to the hotel tonight. Did we just pass it? But no, the, 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 the clause that um, Tom had introduced about the mayor decision, I don't have any language for that specific language. That you said All you for, the, for the appropriation. Right. appropriation yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, if you could circulate that just so people have that. But that also becomes part of the overall draft of the charter. So you will have two sets of documents. It's going to be coming from multiple sources. All right. So you're all aware. Um, for your review, not to comment. You are not responding back. You're not saying anything. All you have to do is read and absorb these before Tuesday. What time is our meeting set for? Five? Five. Before Tuesday, five o'clock. We are scheduled from five to eight. I don't know which room it's in. Here. Okay. I have it somewhere, but I don't know. Uh, pay attention to that. Mary will get back to us. Um, and be ready with your ready comments to come in and talk about the position papers as well as any major changes to the charter. Minor changes, come here, come in there, hand him the sheet. So he sees it and he can call it and do it later. I don't want to spend the body of the time going line by line. It's here. It's here, thank you. And we had talked about editing um, for style, all of the various submissions. Then from that point on, um, there were volunteers who would take that off. Do we have people who are ready to, to do that? And starting when? You would get them. 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock on Tuesday. 
and we would need to have them by 5 o'clock on Thursday. I can assist. I'm actually not going to be here Thursday. Um, I'll be out of town Thursday. Yeah. Is there anyone who... No. Okay. So we will appoint a point person at that point in time to make sure that there is a voice here and that the format and fonts and stuff are sort of in a similar vein. I would suggest your position papers remain as short as you feel possible. Anything of great length, more than a couple of pages or even a page, will not be read. It'll be nice to put it in the record, but nobody's going to read it. Bullets work very well, but that's up to your own style issues. Other decisions or comments that people feel they need to look at at this point in time. We've outlined a procedure. We have reviewed at a marathon that has now gone on for four nights, uh, and we're into the last hour. I'd like you to take one more vet of this particular draft and have an initial... No, we don't need it. We're going to do it on Tuesday. We don't need it. Okay. You have homework. You have an extra hour to go home and read. Um, any other questions or issues to come before this group at this time? Uh, you'll be, we'll come to the press release. Okay. Is Stephen going to be here on Tuesday? One glaring problem. Okay. Uh, other than the press release, any other issues? Moving forward and finishing with the press release, which? Okay. Um, just first, I, I had a half baked thought in the second paragraph that I, is evidence I didn't prove this. Um, Second paragraph where it says strength and participatory, I would make that improve our democratic process. Okay. Did you make up this quote, David? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I hear people do. Yeah, and then put my initial in there, P. But David has to approve it. Right. He approves it and he really said it. Right. right. But if you could put my middle initial in there, <laughs> P. P. As in Pierpont. Because there's now, another David it? Stevens who graduated the same year. I graduated from Long Meadow, he graduated from Northampton. And he has reminded me that several times when I've taken positions that he and I don't necessarily agree on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but David, he in there just to be respectful. So just to play a couple things here, what I pulled out were the changes that we made. Uh, I did not pull out where we kept status quo. And I did not pull out where we rejected ideas for change. <coughs> um, so if we don't like that, we can write differently. But that's how that's how I did this. Or, yeah. I like it. The, uh, I like it. I read it. The only thing I would maybe add, and I don't know how you could quite do it, but where you say in the third par paragraph, simplifying school committee election, I was thinking, can you add the word concurrent or something like by making simultaneous? Terms of two years or something to show yeah, that we was a double change there. Yeah. Totally. One more thing, just to the thing that we just decided today on compensation, I, I sketched out notes for that where I say something like um, compensation for elected officials will be made a separate line item in the council approved budget to improve transparency and establish an independent advisory commission to make recommendations on adequate levels of compensation. Uh, I have a question on our issue with the uh, paragraph 30, uh, ending mayoral control of city council meetings. Control strikes me as not the right word. Is there a more neutral word? Supervision. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Chairing. Chairing. Chairing is a word. Chair, say, say it again. Just put it in the positive that the, that the president, city council president, will chair city council meetings. I'm not sure if people are going to recognize that. I mean, some people are going to change. I'm not sure if we're in it. Okay. Uh, the chairmanship of the, of the city council will go from the mayor to the yes. president. Yeah. Transferring, yeah. transferring the chairmanship Transfer. of the of running city council meetings from the mayor to the city council president. Red? I know we have a few minutes. This is long term. I'm just. Okay, yeah, I want to finish the press oh, release. I'm sorry. Okay. I thought he was not. No. Other press release issues I just want to finish up on? It has I got one more. Okay. Oh, I was just going to say that because we haven't approved it. Um, 
But I think it was actually going to prove it because I sent it out tomorrow, the press release. So we haven't proved it. Would, would people, will take a vote to have you approve me making sure what he said worked out correctly. <laughs> uh, the only other thing is, uh, we have a, I don't want to say 800 pound gorilla in the room that wasn't mentioned in this, but the Collins Center is not mentioned. We should mention a couple more oh, yeah. Collins. And Steve, what's your name again? <laughs> PH. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be our last name. If you <laughs> have, if there's boilerplate language about what the Collins Center does, do you want to send to me? I think you just, just mentioned yeah. with us that the committee was assisted by the Collins Center. Uh, I'll have to give you the full name, but we'll give you the cut. Just so you see a It's on the it's on all of our letterhead. Anything that came from uh, Mary, it says Stephen McGolder, Deputy Director of the Edward J. Collins Center of Public Management, University of Massachusetts. Yeah, it's in my signature line. I'll, I'll be my name. So it's all there. You can just say that we were assisted by. Okay. Other things on the press release. Also, so there's timing. Mark. Yeah, uh, given that we're in 2012, it's now a 129 year old charter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Give him a lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other things on this? Can I have a motion that the uh, chair and Bill will work on the final draft of this and getting it out, but if it is discussed, it's okay? Second. Okay, oh, I see no opposition, thereby we will take care of this and get this out in the next 24 <coughs> hours. Um, other issues? I saw one here that's on the red. Just like once we dissolve and this all gets through, it's going to be on right. November ballot. Um, like I want a campaign, yeah. like crazy for it. Right. So how? I mean, do we just do it as a committee member, or um, is there any? Because we're not really correct. A band there, anymore. there will be. <clears throat> I've spoke to a couple of city councilors about how our next step would be. Uh, there would need to be formed a political action committee, if you will. Uh, if there are funds used, we'd have to register that with the city clerk. Um, and if funds are, are uh, raised, we obviously have to record all those. Um, there would need to be chairs established to that effect. And I think that that's where the guidance of the city council would come forward. Uh, particularly, I know that Jesse Adams is very interested in, in uh, helping out any way he can and given his, his political skills and understanding elections. Uh, he plus other the city, other city councils. This could be a good thing. Okay, but again, we want them to embrace this and make sure that they feel it's part of their document. So we have nine voices plus the mayor, plus all of ours, plus the citizenry, including Emily, uh, out there championing this particular piece. <coughs> this has been an eventful process and will continue, but we do dissolve next Thursday. Uh, I do want to thank Steve for why he's here and. On Tuesday, I want to make sure that we do recognize Mary, who, through all of this, um, has uh, yeah. been a trooper, given her workload, her competing workloads, and some personal issues she's been dealing with, too. Any other questions that we want to bring, or issues we want to bring before the group at this time? Thank you for your continued positive involvement. We will see you next Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Your deadline is for those papers. It's 5 p.m. on Sunday.